Anderson floats it. There's Judy. Pass caught. Judy still going. Down inside the 20. And touchdown, Denver Broncos. We had to fight to get a meal. Yeah, wrong for the Jews. We had to fight to get a pill. That's why we right to get a deal. He on the team, he gotta eat, you know. Spike, spike your skills. Fat. Keep it riding for the fam. You gotta like the we get wheels straight up. Look in the pass, man. Brandon Marshall here, um, bringing you guys another live episode. I really enjoy this part of the platform, being able to have our guys that are in town come into the studio, break bread with myself and my partner, my co-host, Ashley Nicole Moss. Uh, this this gentleman needs no introduction. Um, I think he took the world by storm with all his viral videos off the field, but getting ready to do it on the field. Uh, going back to Alabama, we're talking about a, a guy that reminded me of like the Peter Wargs of the world. Uh, just could do anything out there. Uh, then makes his way to the NFL and has some big, big monster games. Uh, this gentleman breaking bread with us live, Jerry Judy, Ashley Nicole Moss. Appreciate you having me, man. How, did I do good with the intro? Yeah, you, you did good. You I always did. ask. I always ask, mm -hmm. you know, on our show, paper route that we have uh, that, you know, Monday through Thursday, I'm I'm up I'm obnoxious obnoxious with my intros. With I am athlete, I'm more like subtle. Mm -hmm. So did I do okay? No, you did good. Ashley. Yeah, it was good. He usually lays it on really thick, so this was a nice, honest, quick, short there to the go. point one. I liked it. There you go. All right, I'm gonna get right into it. Um brother, when I approach these conversations, you know, I look at like what can I learn, right? And I look at what position am I in, right? Like as an interviewer, and I don't really look at myself as an interviewer. I just like to have conversations and learn. But am I sitting back, like receiving information? Am I giving information? Or are we just sitting here, you know, as brothers, you know, as family, just chopping up, catching it, catching up? This one, I'm going to start off almost like a little bit, like big brother a little bit, mm -hmm. right? And so... And then we can transition because I think there's a lot to learn from you as well, uh, your approach and your mindset. Um, my first, my first, my first uh, question for you um, basically is like, why aren't we having the discussion around Jerry Judy as a top five wide receiver, right? Because I look at like everything that you have, you know, from a skill set standpoint. I don't know if anybody stack up, bro. Mm -hmm. Hands, you can move. Your agility, your ability, like it's just you're 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 a freak. You know what I'm saying? So like, why aren't we having that conversation? Uh, you know, cause you know, it's been a tough few years for my career. You know, first year, I I played the whole season, but I had a couple of drops that I could have went for a thousand yards that year, but yeah. had a couple of drops that didn't go good. My second year, I had getting off to a good start. The first game got hurt, missed like six seven games. Um, you know, and that year was tough, you know, with the offense and everything. My last year, you know, with, with everything going on, you know, it was just – everything was just wasn't connecting. It wasn't no consistency. So, it, I probably it, – it's a – it's a, you know, playing football is a lot that go into it, you know. So, everything just can't flow the way you want it to be and stuff like that. But it's football, you know. You just got to just be patient and eventually going to – Everything gonna start connecting, right? How do you pull yourself out of that frustration, knowing that your skill set is there to be a top five wide receiver, or at least to be mentioned with the top five wide receivers? But circumstance is the reason why it hasn't happened for you. I mean, I just know, like in football, you go through things, so I don't, I just don't let it hold me down, you know, because I know there's better days ahead. So, and I know I'm gonna get to where I need to go, and when everything when God it's on God's timing, mm -hmm. so. I'm not really too stressed about it for real. For for me, bro, like coming up, whether in high school, college, and in the league, I always paid attention to everyone around, like at my position, right? So I was watching Ocho, I was watching Steve Smith, the Randy Mosses, the Terrell Owens, because I'm like, yo, I want what they got, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you call it a competitive, a, 
it's it's within a competitive spirit. It's not envy. It's not jealousy. But it's like, yo, I see that top five. I'm like, how do I crack that? Or if this receiver goes for fi Andre Johnson, Mr. 1500. Yeah. Like Andre Johnson has 1500 yards. I want to do that and some. So has it, is it difficult for you sitting back these last couple years, knowing like what Ashley said, you have all the intangibles, mm -hmm. you have the skill set, but you're seeing the Justin Jeffersons come in right away and, and take their game to another level. The, the Debo Samuels of the world, like there's been receivers coming in. Have, DK Metcalf had a year, right, where he, he was thrust in that conversation. What I'm asking you is, you know, because of, for me and my experience was, like I used to be like, damn, man, I, I got to catch up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you have those moments? Is it difficult? I mean, no, not really. I mean, I I love watching the guys. You know, everybody, that's you. As a competitor, you just want to be great. So you're chasing greatness. You see them guys out there doing great things and making big plays. You feel like you could do the same. So as a football player, that's exactly how you're going to feel. But, you know, sometimes it's just like, like I said, it's all about timing, all about being patient. You know, everything going to start connecting soon. And I just feel like, I just feel like, uh, I don't know, man. Yeah. That yeah. mentality of, like, being able to, like, run your own race is so powerful. Because yeah. I feel like it's human nature to, like, yeah, you focus on a task or you focus on a goal. Like, you're looking ahead at the finish line. Mm -hmm. But you're also like, okay, this person's running a little bit faster than me. This person, like, it's human nature. <laughs> yeah. Like we're You're on your own pace. Right. For you're, yeah. You yeah. compare yourself to other people naturally, mm -hmm. especially in a sport as competitive as football or just professional sports in general. So to be able to have like that mindset, like no, my own race, my own time, not looking to the left, not looking to the right, is definitely like a super powerful right. thing to have, and it's beneficial because it helps you to focus on you and only you. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, every off season I went into, and we're in off season, right? OTAs um, is underway. I think it's week two for a lot of teams. Um, I, I went into every off season trying to get better in three things, right? Um, I don't know how you approach your off season, but to to be mentioned where you're supposed to be mentioned, because I do believe, right? Like you 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 have everything it takes to be a top five wide receiver. Mm -hmm. Like you're that special. Like I'm a huge fan. Um, what are you working on, and things that you can control to make sure you're taking care of your part of the business? Uh, the biggest thing, really. Um, stamina. As a receiver, you need to be able to run all day. So that's my biggest thing, really working on my stamina, just not getting so tired too fast, you know, because if, uh, if I could run all day and be able to run the routes, I can't full speed, not feeling tired. It's a wrap for the DBs. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a wrap for the DBs, no cap. So <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that's the biggest thing. Not really. Pat, though. Huh? Not Pat, Pat. Pat, the best DB I ever went against, ever. 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 Wow. Ever. Cause deep when I go against DB, you know, you could just tell you could just you beat him a couple of times it's easy. Pat, you really gotta think like, <laughs> all right, this is what I'm gonna do. You can't play around with Pat too much, cause the man different. He long, he smart, he fast, and he just he just he just. Y'all go there. back to Alabama, right? Yeah. So y'all had some legendary battles then. Yeah. Can y'all can you take us inside of one of y'all legendary battles? Like when you say it he's the best you've ever gone against. You know what I mean? We're talking about some dope receivers in college, some dope receivers certainly in the league, right? Yeah. So, like, take us into, like, a, a, a legendary battle. Uh, um, I can't really think of one. It just – Let me give you – know, you, I mean, let, me, let me tell you this. So, me and – I play – I practice against Champ Bailey, mm -hmm. right? I practice against Charles Peanut Tillman. Yeah. I practice against Darrell Revis, right? Some of the dudes on my team. And there are so many other uh, corners, but those are, like, some – real dogs right mm -hmm. and it was that same feeling that i had every practice like i had a whole strategy yeah you know i'm like okay i got reeve i know what reeve like i know what he's doing here what he's working on so shit i'm gonna give him this the first time he gonna feel like he got me mm -hmm. and then boom i'm gonna try to give him that but come back here yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. i had four or five plays in camp bro we went at it so bad one day that we start fighting the whole practice we had everybody watching. Mm -hmm. It was just a uh, the craziest uh, day of competition I ever had, bro. Like, we up, jump ball. Usually, you know, you got to let a dude fall. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or, like, all right, you got this one week, but we got to protect each other. Mm -hmm. Nah, bro, we out there damn near hitting. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, I can't I can't think of nothing like that. But, uh, but Pat, like, a, a DB, 
I go against DB. I, I, when I go, it fire y'all separation, whoever, DB, whoever. But Pat is like, you going to catch the ball, ain't no separation. No, he always on it, and, like, just the consistency level he be on, he's he, he, he the best for real. Yeah. I want to dive into something that Brandon, you know, speaks about often, and that's the process of watching film, but watching film correctly. Um, I read somewhere that you, you know, watch film, even highlights like on your phone sometimes, just like oh, yeah. pulling them up, watching it. You're someone who refers to yourself sometimes as like, you know, or what we would refer to as like a film junkie. Like you're constantly watching film, tr constantly trying to figure out how to improve, how to get better. Brandon says it takes you as a football player years to kind of figure out how to watch film correctly. Some guys, it takes five, six years in the league to figure out how to actually watch it correctly, what they're looking at, what to, you know, write down, what to ignore. What was your process in learning how to watch film, but also learning how to watch it correctly to help it improve your game? I feel like, I feel like I started watching it correctly for real. Mm. Cause when I first started, I just, I really just watched the DB, see who I'm going against or, how they play, they leverage, they techniques, if they like the um, jump jam, or they like the back pedal, they like the shadow. It just really, really, that's what I really look for, for real. So you're not watching the defensive coordinators. You're not watching like from a scheme standpoint, uh, you know, how everybody is moving together and what they're doing in certain situations. I mean, I, you, I, I watch like the safeties and stuff like that, but it's like, I really focus on the DB and the Knicks, right. like, I see. It, I feel like I don't. I don't need to watch too much because I'm not the one calling the plays. So right. I, I don't need to really worry about like the. I just need to worry about my area. Right. Right. Where I'm at. No, I, I I understand that. Yeah. But remember, I said like there's certain conversations where I'm sitting in certain spaces, right? Mm -hmm. And this is one. Like I'm going to challenge you to start studying the uh, defensive coordinators as well. Mm -hmm. I want to challenge you to watch everyone, right? And then look at certain situations, right? Where it's like, you know, um, two minute drive before the half, two minute drive uh, at the end of the game, right? Certain situation when we get in the fringe, because when you understand that, like it's, that's never been a problem for guys like yourself. And I throw myself in there, like mm -hmm. when you're a dog, you ain't that want that mono e mono. Hell, sometimes we don't even need to watch film to beat that guy. Mm -hmm. You feel me? But when it come when you become really special, it's like, oh sh like I already I already know where Russ going with the ball. Mm -hmm. Cause this is he's rocking here, so he gotta come see me. Oh yeah. When you when you know the plays and stuff like that, you could you get to know it, you get to see it, you get to like it's repetition. So you see it in practice, you see it in the game, right? You see it on film, it's like I understand what you're saying. It's like the high be though. Right. Like, during right. the game, like you already can, you already know where the ball's supposed to be going as a receiver if you know the offense really good. Love it. I love it. Um before we move on to some other hard I feel like hitting, that's a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. Though. When you know where the ball yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tell them yeah. why though. Tell them why. It, it's a good it's a good thing because you know you you know your you know your stuff, but it's a bad thing because you know the ball not about to cut to you. Yeah. Cause you might be running around lazy or something like that. Yeah. Uh, Facts. You know. Before we go to something cool, you mentioned something, right? Because you're going into your fourth year. Uh, you, you almost had your, I think you had 900 something yards in your, in your first year as a, your rookie campaign. Like you said, there was a couple drops where, you know, if you if you came down with it, it, it had you uh, over that thousand yard mark, which mm -hmm. would have been, it's still great. You had a great rookie campaign. The second year injury, 400 something yards. And last year. I got injured, missed four games, played like. But twenty third percent, two nine hundred yards, nine hundred, so another nine hundred. Yeah. So we got uh, Andre Johnson. It really, it really supposed to be a band. They called them bubbles, uh, rushing yards. So for real, yeah. No, that must he must have just threw it behind. That was lateral. Nah, man. yeah, they think it was lateral. So so you really are supposed to be over. Yeah, but but you need to be good. like Larry Fitzgerald. What politic? <laughs> Larry Fitzgerald calling the league <laughs> office, bro. Like for real. For real? <laughs> Does he really? Did he really? Well, I'm saying like if in a situation like that, where he a bubble screen, it, that could be a a run because if if the quarterback throws it behind him, that's uh -huh. a run. Yeah. But if he throws it in front or lateral, it's a reception. Okay. I would yes, Larry would call who, league officials. What? No, I need that to be marked as a reception. Get out of here. <laughs> bro, you need to call. You can still do that. No, I'm not about to do no, that. No, bro, man. what you talking about? You don't want, you're going to be in my position in about 10 years. 
You'll be in my position, you're gonna look back and you're gonna be every every once in a while, right? You're gonna reminisce. Mm. You're gonna go to Google, you're gonna type in Jerry Judy stats. <laughs> <I'm dead>. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna know the numbers, but like, I, I, I know how to ban I know how to ban it. I know how to ban it. I know. But but bro, you go look and you're like, damn, that, that could have been thousand, thousand, thousand. Mm -hmm. That's what you want. Yeah. Five, six years in a row, thousand yards, thousand yards. But anyways, um, Earlier, we were talking about why. Like you said, there's so much to football. I called a dude, Golfie Global, mm -hmm. uh, before this uh, conversation. I was like, bro, same thing. I was like, tell me why he hasn't been in that conversation yet, right? Like, why, why aren't we seeing him take over? Because we know what he's capable of. And he said the same thing you said. Because I want you to speak to the people and these younger athletes to understand, like, it's so many more things that go into it. And he was like, um, bro, you got to understand like year two, the quarterback situation, mm -hmm. offense, mm -hmm. right? Who's the number one guy who they're trying to put in position, right? So like, I, I don't want to call nobody out, but you know, some things you can control, some things you can't. The mm -hmm. things that you can't control, can you share some of those things with, you know, the younger wide receivers? Because that we deal with a lot of frustration, man, and guys don't understand that there's politics to it. Guys don't understand that there's you know, uh, it's uh, other guys involved, and you got to rely on so many other people. I feel like the wide receiver position is the only f position on the field where our our on everybody else's future, stuff. yes, yeah. is in the hands of everybody else. Yeah, like you, if the uh, old line, if the quarterback, first of all, you got the coach got to put you in the right position to make plays. The quarterback got to look your way to throw you the ball. The old line got to block for the quarterback to throw you the ball. So it's it's a lot of things depend on got to depend on. For real. Right. Okay. I want to dive into the quarterback a little bit. Um, you know, Russell Wilson last year, it was a little bit difficult. The things that were being said about him, the season didn't go the way people expected it to, wanted it to. But you were one of the first, if not the first, I believe, to kind of come out in support of Russell Wilson. Why was that so important for you to do? Because, bro, the media be acting like they know what they be talking about, <laughs> what be going on in the locker room and stuff like that. Yeah. But they, they don't, so I had to just clear the air. Cause they were just trying to. I understand we losing, so when they, when we losing, everything just so negative all the time. But I had to just clear the air and just let the world know like what the media say is not true. Right. What's something that I mean? There's been a lot of things said, and I think a lot of people feel like they know Russ, you know, via things, reports out there. But what's something that you know as somebody who sees him day in and day out during the season? that people would be surprised to know about him? A positive thing. Uh, be surprised? I don't think nobody's surprised at how hard he worked at, for his position. I think everybody know that. Like, just the consistency, just the way he just carry himself around the building, the way he go about his business. I feel like that ain't no surprise. Everybody know that. You used to, I, used to know that. Right. Yeah, yeah but I, I think that um, there's some people, because, like, if you read some, you, some of the stuff that came out last year, you know, uh, that was a real thing. It was like, well, he has, how can he do that when he has all these other things going on? He has the Goodman brand. He has uh, West to East Productions and, you know what I'm saying? It's all so, about managing your time. So can you walk them through like what a day uh, uh, of Russell's can look like? Because you've been around him for going on two years now and mm -hmm. you've been at his crib in San Diego. You guys have done other things uh, together and, and, you know, all over down the States, it feel like. Yeah, I mean... I don't know. He, I know he the first one in the building. He probably get there around like five thirty. Um, you know, go in the training room, get his body right. Uh, it just the consistency he doing it with, and it just the same routine routine every day. Get his body right. You know, just warm up for practice. Uh, the basically yeah. that's it for real. Right, I mean, right, speaking right. to all the things that he has going on, I feel like there's a common misconception or at least a narrative that's tried to be pushed out there that his teammates y'all have an issue with the fact that your quarterback has x y and z going on outside of football so even if it's not about russ i mean just as an athlete in general is that something that you guys even really care about that if your quarterback has you know this to do on his day off or he's in this movie or he has this campaign going on or is it really just about listen when you're on the field where you're in the facility, as long as you do your job, I don't really care what you do outside of that. Or are there guys who genuinely do care? I think everybody should want to have something going on outside of football. 
That's true. For real. I mean, I don't think nobody really. I think, like I said, I think that the, was just the media perspective, the media doing, you know, what they do. I don't feel like nobody really pay attention to him, what he got going outside of football. Because the way he come in the building and handle what he need to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the only thing that matters. I I have something that Russ can work on. What? And, and you know, full disclosure, big fan of Russell Wilson. That's your bro. Yeah. You guys are uh, in a bromance. We're a little bromance. <laughs> most winning his quarterback through 10 years. It's like the first thing I say when I talk about Russ in football. Um, but I that was my last cup of tea playing in Seattle. So that's when I was able to really witness how he works. Um, and it is actually a huge challenge. I had Jay Cutler and Matt Forte. You know, they, they were looking at me like I was crazy when I was doing Inside the NFL, right? Really? Back in 2014, I think, was my first year doing it. Um, and that was a big move. No one's ever done that before. Be That was the first – active athlete to do full-time broadcasting but what made it very unique was i was flying to Ch- to new york from chicago every tuesday in season and i'm talking about ball mm-hmm. right like we don't do that like yeah. we can't t- i know look look at bro, bro like how the hell you do- <laughs> he's okay. like that's not what russ doing that's different, well, that's different. That's, i know, I know about that, that. i know I so about I, that. I, I some of their pushback is valid um let me take this out my mouth this is you say you'll not- fly back tuesday to chicago so he was fly be, from Chicago on Tuesdays to do inside the NFL in New York and then fly back. So you know Tuesdays. Same day? Are, yeah, so our off season, I mean our off day is Tuesday. Tuesday. Boom. So <clears throat> I live right downtown off Michigan Ave and Gary Indiana was literally like 40 minutes away. So I would have a, a Challenger, little that's I love the Challenger jet. I had a Challenger waiting and f- I'll get up at five in the morning. I'll be wheels up at 6 a.m. I'm landing in Teterboro uh, in New York, New Jersey. Um, I'll land in Teterboro. It was a two hour flight. Mm -hmm. So I'll land in Teterboro two hours later, hour uh, ride into the city, 45 minute ride into the city, go right into the, uh, into our production meeting, get dressed, do all of that stuff. Shoot at 12 Eastern, uh, 12 to 1, 1 1.30. Uh, by three o'clock, I'm on a plane by three thirty. Wheels back up in the city because of the the time difference. I was landing back in Chicago by five p.m. on my off day. During that time, I'm on a plane. I'll do all my <coughs> treatment, have my little recovery boots, yeah. my little stem machines, do all of that stuff. And I and I went for fifteen hundred yards, right? All pro, Pro Bowl, all of that. And I had an office in the city. And, uh, you know, I had my foundation. Mm -hmm. And so, like, after practice, when I would drive into the city, I would stop in the office, check on everything. You know, it could be 15, 20 minutes Friday. I might stay a little bit longer. And they hated that. New regime came in, and they were like, no, we don't want you to do none of that. And I was like, well, this ain't going to work out. And that's when we decided just to split ways. They were probably going to trade me anyway. But don't you feel like times are different now, though? Like 100%. You were like one of the first, or if if not the first. You gotta be the first. Now it's (laughs) different. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's different. Now I feel like you don't. (laughs) No, no, no. Now there's. There's Now CJ McCollum did some. I think he signed Draymond Green. Draymond Green. Yeah. No, now athletes are doing it. They're doing it. Why they playing? Draymond, listen, Draymond will lose a game. Go to the podcast. Draymond did in the finals. I'm talking about football. Oh, football? That's a, that's a good question. I think we're still – NBA is always faster than the NFL, mm. whether from a a, a, yeah. a social standpoint or from just, you know, just from a cultural standpoint, I would say, meaning like, yeah, I would say they're faster in a lot of ways. Um, I would say football, the only difference is, is like you'll have guys who aren't officially retired doing TV, like Matt Ryan, for example, is Larry, not officially retired. Reti- yeah, right, not officially Larry, retired. Yeah. Larry Fitzgerald? He, retired yeah, he ain't either. make no announcement. Right. He ain't retired. Yeah. So like Larry not, retired. Yeah, I know. I keep waiting for Larry to come back. They're not officially retired when they're doing TV. And then also the groundbreaking thing was, remember Tom Brady got his Fox deal while he was still an active player. So it was like, a, it, was a, yeah. it was a set in job Kelsey's. when he decided to go ahead and retire the kelsey's are probably doing their podcast so like that's a yeah. thing yeah. but yeah nobody's really more, doing it like the nba is doing or like you were doing yeah. it that's more guys kind of well more guys are doing their own thing vaughn miller has the vaughn cast so there are uh jalen ramsey launched a podcast so now the vibe is you know back then we podcast wasn't booming like that it was yeah. boom it was it was the first wave of it but we were like not podcast 
So everybody was doing, if you're doing it, it was linear. Now everybody's doing podcasts. Right, so right, more right, guys right. are doing podcasts. But I brought all of that up to say that, you know, it does matter if you don't ball on the field. Right. Like oh, if, yeah. right. if you're doing yeah. all those things and you don't ball, it's a problem. And I feel like that's why, you know, that's that came up for Russ where he, you know, social media to um, just who Russ is like Russ is Russ is a mogul. Like people don't understand, like Russ will be a billionaire. OK. Yeah. And he's doing and he's going to be a Hall of Famer as a football player. He's going to do both. But last year, y'all trade for him. High expectations and everything implodes. Now, you can speak to it more than I can of why the why behind it. But like when you don't have the product on the field where it needs to be, then there, the criticism is going to be there. Like yeah. you said, success breeds envy and, and success breeds other things as well. Um, but for like what I was going to say about Russ, because, you know, I tried to speak on it, you know, throughout the year because there was only a few people um, defending him. And I appreciate, you know, you stepping up and doing that because a lot of cats won't do that. You know, even if they rock with you, which is a weird thing. But like this dude, my only problem with him is he don't get enough sleep. Really? Oh, yeah. They say he don't sleep at all. Yeah. Like, bro. Like, and he might get mad at me saying this publicly, but it's like, bro, five hours is not enough. I wanted to get eight hours of sleep. But all the other stuff, he's so regimented. I mean, five hours, depending no, it's not on, enough. there are some billionaires who get five hours of sleep. Then, uh, yeah, but that ain't, like, that ain't enough. Elon like, Musk talks about how he improved his sleeping regimen going from like his normal, what was it, like two to three, and now he's getting five to six, and he's like, I feel so much better. There are some guys who- Ah, just, see, think about yeah. what this is, but you feel better. Right, he but feel I better. Said, <laughs> but five to six is a lot to some people. Right. Like, that's a lot of sleep, especially when you have, like you said, seven, so eight. many things going on. Sometimes Sometimes that's all you can get and that's all that your body needs after a while like you develop you develop a um a familiarity with that your body uh, can no function science like that. you need certain you need certain hours of and certain minutes of REM sleep and there's so much to it and I'm, I'm saying that like we can talk about sleep you know in so many different ways to approach it but like the dude's uh lifestyle and routine is just unmatched mm -hmm. like he wakes up the same time every single morning, you know, he gets up at like 4.30. He's the first one in, like you said. But even in the off season, he's doing the same thing in the off season. He has a physical therapist. He has a, a performance team, mm -hmm. right? Like you no, hear about the LeBron different. James investing, right? Tell him, bro, million dollars here. Russ is investing the same. I think that came out a couple of years. He's investing a million dollars in his body. Right. So for people to say he don't care, like why would he, if he don't care, why the hell does he have <laughs> Why are doing all that? Right. Right. <laughs> I mean, I don't think you could ever say that he doesn't care. I think, you know, maybe there's a level of disappointment because when you think of Russell Wilson, you think of like a top tier quarterback. And when you don't see a top tier quarterback do top tier quarterback things, it's a right. level of disappointment. Uh, but going mm -hmm. into the season, Russell obviously back. Sean Payton, very disappointed he didn't go to my Dallas Cowboys, but we can have that conversation a different day. I knew you. I, thought I you mean, were going to the Cowboys. I was, I was, I was, sh I would have bet a lot of money in the bank. Y'all been saying that for 10 I, years. Sean okay, Payton's coming to the Cowboys. True story. This is a true story before I get to my question. I interviewed Sean Payton when I was at Sports Illustrated. I interviewed him LA Super Bowl. So not this one, the one prior. He came over and off camera, I had asked him, I was like, so how are you, you know, feeling about the Dallas Cowboys job? Like, you know, whatever. I was tampering a little bit, but there's no tampering in the NFL, so I was fine. <laughs> and he didn't say much, but the way he looked at me was like he was intrigued. Like, he was like, nah, if they ask me, I'm going to take it. And then I don't know what the hell I went wrong. And hold then on. here we are. Hold on, hold on, Ash. Before, here you, we are. before you ask now him your question. Now he's a Denver question. Bronco. I don't know what happens. <laughs> Listen, like, that same Super Bowl, I pull up to the Bel Air Hotel, uh -huh. the fancy hotel. I think it's called the Bel Air and, or the Beverly Hills Hotel, one of them but very fancy mm -hmm. for lunch. Okay. My booth is right. My my booth is where JJ's sitting. Okay. Okay. Sean Payton. I don't like, I'm going to like this Sean story. Sean Payton's booth is right here. And guess who's right here? Sitting right here. Russell Wilson? No. Who? Mm -hmm. Jerry Jones. So what the? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's Jerry, the time. I'm like, it's God going down. It, Jerry. I'm like, it's going down. I, I could have sworn. I was like, damn, this is awkward. And they ain't want every, you know. Did you hear what they were saying? No, they weren't. They tried to like, I felt like they were, you know, being discreet about it, but he didn't come. I thought he was going to go to the Cowboys. But anyways. Well, going back to my question, <laughs> now that you just broke my heart all over again, um, I can't have anything. What do you like about his offensive philosophy? Because offensively, like he's, 
he's on a different level. Like his mind works just differently from your interaction so far. What are you really liking about what he's bringing to this team offensively? Um, I just the the different routes. I mean, I feel like we got routes that it it's like little steals. So I feel like. You know, Michael Thomas had a big year. Everybody had a big what year. I know you talking about. Too. <laughs> yeah. I know what you're like, talking about. <laughs> I mean, it just, it just like certain routes, the splits. You want with the splits and stuff like that. We ain't do that too much. Um, my past years being in the league with the um, certain splits, where we could run different route out of. They won't. They can't really recognize what routes we got. So, uh, that's that's one thing that I, that I love. He brought to the offense. Intense guy. Intense guy. Um. Coach Payton. No, nah, Coach Payton's love- funny too. He's funny. He's, he's funny. funny. He's a, he's amazing. He comes from – Bill Parcells mm-hmm. is like his guy, right? So he's cut from that same cloth. It's like if you handle your business, they treat you like blood and your son. Mm-hmm. If you don't, man, you gonna, well, you ain't going to be around yeah. uh, that you know that, that, that long. Um, what type of guy is, is Coach Payton? conversation is making ve- me very emotional. I'll have you guys know. <laughs> oh, this. yeah. Like, I'm phenomenal. super emotional hearing this right now. But one time one time we were in the bathroom. They got they brought me there. They they're going to play me, whatever. And uh, we're in the bathroom. I run into him. And it's like two weeks in, three weeks in. And mm-hmm. I still don't have a pack. I'm still not in. I'm like, Coach, you know, I've been kind of, bu- uh, uh, you know, um, bothering him for, for some time. He's like, yo, stop asking me. Stop asking me. I got you. We're going to get there. Just trust me. Trust me. And and one morning we're in the bathroom, and I'm like, "So, coach, what's up?" He said, "Did the money? Did, he said, did the check clear?" I said, "Yeah." He said, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I, well, "I don't care about the money." Whoa. I said, "I don't care about the money. I want to play." <laughs> and he walked out. But what type of guy? Is nah, that's a tough. That was a, t- that was yeah. a, that was a bar, <laughs> though. I mean, that right. Was- he said that the no. check clear. <laughs> That's like one of those questions you're like, was it not supposed to? Like, right. Well, because I, I would have played for free that year. I, all I wanted was a chance to win a Super Bowl, right? right? Like, I'm like, oh, shoot, this is how it's going to end. My last year, go there. They was rolling. Drew, right. Michael Thomas, mm-hmm. Alvin Kamara, Mark Ingram, Cam Jordan, all them boys on the defensive side. Yeah. The Mario Davis rolling. I'm, oh, but, no, y'all had a, I had a squad. Yeah. But anyways, what type of guy is Coach Payton, bro? Like, and you heard the story about the, what he said to the quarterback throwing the pick, but like share share some 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 details with us. No, nah, Coach, Coach Payne, he funny. I mean, he be he be joking around, but you know, knowing to keep it serious. Um, you know, it, it's it's early, so I don't really got no really funny. Or How's y'all story. relationship? I mean, do y'all talk? Does he spend time? Yeah, talking he, to he, you? he spent a lot of time with the receivers on the field, off the field. You know, just. Giving us little details in our routes and um, just educating us about the offense and stuff like that for real. Yeah, yeah. He always around the receivers for real. Do you feel more comfortable in this system or Coach Hackett's system from last year? Um, see, I I feel like I'm a fast learner for real. So, I mean, this system going to be a lot more. This system way different from Coach um system from last year, but I feel you like forgot the coach's name. No, Coach Hackett. Hell, you know what I'm, you set him up. I'm like, oh. <laughs> you feel like this one's gonna be more explosive, more creative, more yeah, it's you know, more difficult ex- to defend. Yeah, it's going a lot more difficult just because the concepts and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's gonna be, and it's just like it's just gonna be easy. I feel it like must and, be nice. And the personnel groups actually like Coach Payton. See, this is what you guys could have got with the Cowboys. No, sound, he may run lovely. the same thing, but out of Three, four different formations yeah. and stuff like and different person. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot, and everybody got their packages. Everybody have their roles. It's going to be exciting to see. Um, what's the expectations, bro? You know, Russ. You know, bounce back year for. I mean, I, I don't want to single out Russ. Cause that's what that's what the narrative is. That you know, offensive linemen go down, receivers go down, right? First year coach. I think there's a lot to go into it. Obviously, you're the guy to give you all this money, lead the way, find a way, right? Mm-hmm. And so you got Russell, uh, who I think is still a top tier quarterback, best in the league, uh, one of the best in the league. And you have Coach Payton, a Hall of Fame coach, and y'all loaded defensively. We know what we got on that side. Mm-hmm. Offensively, like y'all could potentially have a dangerous or top. Yeah, five not only. 
Not only that, I mean, the city's going to be awfully feeling good about themselves because uh, the Nuggets I, the, and, uh, <laughs> Nuggets might be, be bringing a championship and, parade um, to the city real soon. It's, it's all, eyes will be, in my all, city. all eyes will be on the Denver Broncos right. next. So, right. yeah. And the Avalanche just won, right? The Avalanche just won. The, the last just, one. Yeah, the last one. Yeah, last year. Who was uh, who else just won? Um, I don't um, know. Isn't it? Is this? Still, I don't. I don't watch no hockey. Y'all gonna miss that, me? No, I believe they <laughs> yeah. won the Stanley Cup last year. Right now, it's the Panthers, and I don't know who won last night. If I it think was, the baseball other... team won too. Rockies. I think the Rockies. The won Rockies. Too, it? No, I don't. I think... don't think the Rockies won a World Series. Uh, no, but... they were. There. I don't think they've been I good. Thought, since I I was there. When, they, just, when I was there, I they mean, had a nice little run. Just, talk, just, just, just talking this year, the Nuggets are rolling, yeah. headed to the finals. A lot of people, like myself, have them picked to win the whole thing. Yeah. Once once basketball season's over, all eyes are gonna be on the Broncos to bring another one to the Mile High City. Yeah. So nah, this is gonna be a big year for sure. You know, we got all the pieces. Everybody coming back. You know, we got, had a lot of injuries last year, so everybody coming back from that, recovering from that. So I feel like this year gonna be big. It's gonna be exciting. What does big mean? Like if you had to paint the picture of big, what's Jerry Judy's painting gonna look like? All I know is it's gonna be better than last year. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I would hope so. That's all I know. That's big. All right, it's paint last, last year's year. picture for us. Huh? So if you're an artist, you're Basquiat. Mm -hmm. get, you get the dreads and everything. So you're Basquiat. Can you paint a picture of what last year? Cause I wanna see what big could be, right? So can you paint a quick picture real quick of last year, last year's experience? Boom, here's your canvas right here. Got your, some paint, got your brushes. Uh, I don't know what you asked me for. What, <laughs> what, <laughs> what color would it be? Would it be like, black? He's like, bro, <laughs> bro you're going too deep. <laughs> let's, let's, I'll do it. Let's simplify it. Let me show you, let me show oh, you. Okay, you're this gonna, what you're, I would do. You're gonna paint Canvas it? is on the floor. Okay. Boom. Last year to me, I'll take all the paint and just throw that shit like this. <laughs> <laughs> That's the painting. Voila! Abstra it's abstract? <laughs> Ab whatever you want to call it. Um, abstract, so abstract, contemporary, This year would be trash. a little bit more um, line art, which means there's more direction. There's more shape. There's more structure. I guess that would be if, we're, if we have to relate right. to art. I don't know why we're putting Ju it through our art history Ju class. like, but... man, let's go. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Simplify it like this. Is this a playoff team? Oh, for sure. Is for this sure. a Super Bowl team? For sure. Okay. For sure. I mean, we got all the tools. We got everything we need. We got the coach. We got the quarterback. We got the receivers. We got the line. We got the defense. I mean. Russ looking good? He looking great. He looking great. You know, doing what doing what Russ do for real. What, 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 what does he look like right now? Because, like, he, it, something came out where – something came out where – um he lost a lot of weight, nah, he so he's he really lean, up, and, but he ain't tell nobody how much he, he lost. Can you tell a big difference? Nah, you can tell a bit different, though. Yeah. He done, he done slammed up. Yeah. He done slammed up big time. Sorry, hold on one second. My little boy just fell asleep <laughs> in the corner. <laughs> it, was your art, it was your art um <laughs> analogy to put him to sleep. Right. <laughs> <laughs> My little son, Zozo, four years old, over in the corner, just fell asleep. I love him. Baby lion. You got children. Yeah, I got two. Yeah, yeah. What's special about being a father? Man, just watching them grow, just seeing them do new things every day. That's oh. really, that's really the the best part for real. Boys, yeah. girls. I got two girls. Oh, you're a girl dad. Girls, yeah. You I make? Love do that. you make them run routes? No. <laughs> Only one of them walking right now. I got the the youngest one learning right now. She just standing up on her own. That's awesome. Yeah, bro. That's I love beautiful. that the the phrase, you know, with the late great Kobe Bryant girl dad has taken on this life of its own. So what does being a girl dad mean to you? Mean to you. I mean uh you know, it just makes you look at women different for real. Yeah. You know, just it just, it just, it just, I be, I just be looking at my daughter like, damn, like you really mine, like you, you wanted me for real. So it's like, that's big. I, it's, yeah, it's just a different type of feeling, a different type of love. Yeah, that that is, is big. Like what you said, that was really powerful. Um, you know, make you look at women differently. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I feel like as men, you know, when we step outside, like we should look at all women i mean this is a good benchmark for us because it can kind of get perverted in a lot of ways right mm -hmm. um it's like this could be my mom this could be 
my sister. Yeah. This could be my daughter. For sure. And then also for me too, I always look at like, you know, women. Uh, it's like, yo, if this was my mom, my sister, or my daughter, like I would want another man or somebody to treat them this way. Yeah. Or help them if they're in a situation. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's kind of how like my perspective changed with, with my daughter, uh, Ziggy, when she was born. She's eight. She has a twin brother. Such a good conversation, and we'll get back to the conversation shortly. But first, I want to show some love to some of the partners that continue to fuel energy into our platform to keep conversations like this going. Amazon, big shout out to Amazon. And when you think about Amazon, a lot of times you think about one or two services. You think about free shipping, you think about Amazon Prime. But the reality is, Amazon is made up of a suite of services. Prime Fast, Prime Video, Amazon Music Prime, and free shipping. Prime is where you can go to pursue your passions. As a former professional athlete, I personally love all the sports documentaries, but I also spend a lot of time watching a lot of documentaries in film and production because this is my new thing, and that's what I'm transitioning to. A lot of times when I'm driving home from shooting a couple episodes of I Am Athlete or Paper Route, I'm listening to Amazon Music Prime just to detach and relax and reset for the next day. Whatever your interests are, whether you love sports, whether you love fitness like I do, Prime allows you to get more out of your interests. That's what makes Prime so special. From shopping to streaming, whatever it is, it's on Prime. Visit amazon.com slash prime. Whatever your interests are, you can find it there. That's amazon.com slash amazon prime. Are you the best route runner in, in football or like? In my opinion, yeah. I mean, me, I, me too. I'll put you up there as well, like for real. And there's some dogs. Um, take a look at these nine here. <clears throat> uh, can you name these nine uh, route runners? And and look, there could be more. Some receivers may be mad at me, but I put this list together. And I know there's more guys out there because there's always like hidden jewels that you just don't know. Yeah. But these are the, the big names. No, can I get that back? There we go. All right, can you name the nine that I put out there? And then can you put them in order? Uh, as the best route runners behind Jerry Judy. Okay. That one. At first, I'm going to go who I've been watching since I was in high school. I'm going to go Amari Cooper, one. Um, I'm going to go Devontae Adams, two. Uh, nah, that's tough. Was right? that difficult for you uh, picking between Amari Cooper and Devontae Adams? Because both is crazy good. No, because I've been watching Coop since – yeah, since he was at Bama, and I, I ever since I just been watching him ever since. So, I I like really watched the route. So I think Coop routes up there for right, sure. Right, okay. Uh, Devonta, I'm not I'm not going that for like the best receivers. No, no, best no, route, route runners, runners just sure. route runners yeah, yeah. for sure. Coop, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go Coop. I'm gonna go Devonte Adams. Man, you got another Coop up there that's always. Disrespected, overlook, reverse <laughs> racism. <laughs> nah, Cooper Cup got routes for sure. Cooper Cooper Cup got routes for sure. But I love I love his routes. Yeah, he got he, routes. He for runs sure. like aggressive. It's not your list. Savvy. Oh, here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's I'm not your up. list. All right. All right, I'm gonna go right here. Well, he got me picking you. Why you picked? <laughs> Why uh, I pick what? You said, why you got Devontae over Coop? You don't think? No, no, no. I'm with you. No, 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 no. I just thought it was different. It's difficult. Yeah. yeah. I mean, look at this list. So you got you got Coop at one, Devontae at two. Who's your three? I got – I'm, I'm going to go Diggs at three. Mm. Go okay. Uh, I'm going to go Diggs at three. I'm going to go Keenan Allen at four. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go – I'm going Jets at five. Dang, that's that's far down, bro. But go ahead. I'm going. I'm going. What you mean far down? Not your list. <laughs> what you mean far down? It's not. Don't listen to him. It is I'm not going out. I'm going out route running. If you if you list. say the top five best receivers, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to listen to route running. Okay. I'm going to go. Cooper Cup. Six. Uh, and and, and if there's uh receivers. Uh, that should be on here. Uh, you can put them up there. I just these are just the nine that I threw up there. So no, nah, you, you, you done. I got everybody for real. I'm so we go, got three left. I'm gonna go CD. 
Waddle Tariq. Waddle Tariq. All right, who's honorable mention? Like a guy that when nobody When I see the respects. list, I would, I would think about who you were missing. I couldn't really think about nobody for real. Adam Thielen, have you ever watched Adam Thielen? Adam Thielen got routes. Adam, Adam Thielen got routes. <laughs> yeah. Adam Thielen got routes. Who else missing? Any big dudes that, like, got routes, but we don't – we never get – we ne- no one ever talks about a big wide receiver's – in, in that in that in that way, like yo, this dude can run routes. Why y'all disrespect us like that? Is there any big wide receiver out there? Is just well, Keenan is kind of big. He's big, yeah. yeah. He's big. How tall Keenan? Is like six. Keenan like six. Can we can we fact check? Is he that like one? six five? I, six, no, four? no, he's, he's like six, six two five. six two six three. Six two six. Three. I thought he was like six four. Yes. I got six two. Six oh, two. Why does he look so DK only big receiver I could think that run good routes. He run good routes. DK, yeah. DK? He's not a route runner, but he he's, like he's get, a strong he route get, runner. He get out his braids pretty good. Yeah, that's right. He's a yeah. strong. He's strong at the top. Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. he's a big boy. So. All right, well, 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 that's good, um, bro. <clears throat> there's a couple people that can reach the youth, right? Like, there's a lot of athletes, but then there's a few athletes that the youth just like gravitate towards. You're mm-hmm. one of those dudes because of those videos that I talked about earlier. Like people study you the way they used to study Ocho, right? Like this dude still to this day uh go back to like Ocho on the field, you know, when he had VHS eight VHS tapes, right? Mm-hmm. Um excuse me. Um what advice can you give to the youth athletes or the you know those football players in high school? Like Jerry Judy's Keys to success could be two, could be three, could be six. Do you have any advice? Um, you know, keep the main thing the main thing. Mm-hmm. You know, if you got a goal or something that you you're chasing, you know, just make sure that's your your main focus. Um, and two, just never get complacent for real. Never get complacent on what you do. You know, you and just love what you do. Once you love what you do. Uh, it's just easier to really just stay on the right path on it and just keep the right mindset to, to chase your goal for real. Mm. Love it. That's powerful. Keep the main thing the main thing. Keep the main thing the One main of your thing. favorites is don't put the fame before the game. Yep. I feel like that's a huge challenge for youth athletes right yeah. now, especially with Neil deals. Yeah. Coach Saban, any legendary stories with, about Coach Saban? You, are y'all good? Because huh? he's one of those. <laughs> what you y'all got a good relationship? I mean, I mean, I ain't talked to him since I left. I mean, Why? It just wasn't never like that. Why? It was no good or bad relationship. Just wasn't it just, like that. It was, it, just, business, it was just business like that. <laughs> <laughs> just, just business. Do your three years and get up out of here. <laughs> Wait, does he have any relationships with any of his ex-players? I don't know. I don't know. Nobody ever never, never told me that. What made you me. choose them over all the other schools that wanted you? Like, like what made him a great recruiter? Did he come into your living room? Uh, yeah, he did. He did. I mean, and I just went with my heart. I ain't listen to no coaches or anything. Mm. I ain't because I always, I always knew like you get that a coach could leave. So I ain't really. I just went with my gut and what my heart told me, and it said Alabama. So I just went to Alabama, and I seen Coop doing that, C. Red doing what they do. I'm like, I could do the same thing. I'm gonna go over there and ball. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, when he when he sat in your living room, what type of guy was he? Was he like really chill? Did he cross his legs, or was he like <laughs> Did he aggressive? Cross like, his legs. We gotta get this done. Like, <laughs> tell, tell, nah, tell nah, us he, about he, when. No, nah, he was he was chill. I mean, he was just. He was keeping it 100, you know. He was just telling me, like, uh, he was just telling me, like, every other coach, you going to come here and play right away. Now nah, he was just saying, you're going to have to earn your position and stuff like that, you know, just basically saying all the good things for mm-hmm. real. Did y'all cook for him? Did y'all prepare? How, how was that process, like, recruiting process? I didn't have that, a bunch of college scouts in my living room. I had one coach uh, from UConn came to my crib, mm-hmm. and he actually came in my, my bedroom, and we watched, like, film together, mm-hmm. right? But that was, like, my only experience with a coach at my crib. But being the type of athlete that you were, yeah. well sought after, um, you know, talk to us about that experience. And I say that because it's I think that's a, what a lot of people would have done, you know. Hey, here's some drinks, Mr. Saban, and here, my, my, my cornbread. I can't really remember exactly how it went down, but 
I mean, I had a few coaches come to the house. We, I can't remember having anything to eat or whatever, but um, yeah, he they used they really used to pull up to the school for real. Uh, that was okay. yeah, that when we, right. we usually chop it up and stuff like that. Okay. Is um is Bama still the dynasty? Because we saw Georgia last year or this past year beat uh, TCU, blew them out. Mm. The year before that. They took Bama to the mat and they and they won. Georgia's looking like that that may be the new dynasty and Bama may be the thing of the past. At least at least that's what some people are saying. You see them no longer dominating the yeah, rankings, the it, playoff picture like they used to. So it's, it's up. It's back and forth. It's back and forth. I ain't gonna say Georgia's the new dynasty and all, but mm-hmm. Bama's still up there. Georgia, uh, Georgia got how many national championships? I believe this is their was it their third? Or I'm not even sure. I'm That's not, it? I, or check. Four, how many, how many, how many championships, championships does uh, Georgia have? UGA. I know that they two-peated. UGA. So, yeah. UGA, yeah. I you know. You got to have way more than You got to have. No, not. Gotta maybe have it's like. How, how many does Alabama have? We got like 17. 17? In football? 17 national championships. Dang. How many more years Coach Saban have left in them, you think? Uh, Didn't he just sign another? He may have. Uh, he probably got. Oh, no. I can't. I still can't believe y'all haven't talked or spoken since you you left. Have you gone back to campus? Yeah, I went um to a spring game a few years back. I went to the spring game. Oh, you over Bama? Huh? You yeah, you over? You watch what? on TV and support from afar, but nah, you need nah. me. <laughs> nah, man. I be I be trying to um I be wanting to go back. Yeah. You know, no, but, I was right. What? They only had three. It was actually four. This last one was their fourth. Oh, oh wow. They, oh, they know. Yeah. So it was 1942, 1980. 2021, 2022, the year they beat Bama, yeah. and then this last year when they blew out TCU, so it was four. Now go um, search how much Alabama got. <laughs> and show me who the dynasty. No, but obviously you guys have more hardware. <laughs> but I wonder, you know, we see the playoff picture, you know, for college football, and we see how the championships are unfolding these past few years. Mm. Bama's not number one like they used to be yeah. all the time. There are other teams now in the picture. You think of LSU. Yeah. TCU had a Cinderella season. You see mm. UGA now. So any... UCF. Not n- mm, okay. We won a championship. Um <laughs> not any um <laughs> not necessarily are you worried, but is there a door or is there a possibility rather that Bama's reign over college football is no longer as dominant as it once was? I mean, it is a possibility. Georgia it, Georgia is coming up and do their thing, but I mean, Bama is Bama, you can't just never then we're just gonna keep doing what they do for real. Okay. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna see this year. Okay, we're so let me ask you year. this then. Let's say we get Bama and uh, Georgia back at the national championship. Let's just say mm. who wins this time around. Who do you think I'm gonna say? <laughs> <laughs> All right, last question. Keep it. I was gonna see if you would keep it honest. <laughs> La- last question, and we're gonna let you go. And this is gonna be the promo. Right before you answer, we're gonna cut it. Okay. Hopefully, team, we taking notes on this. Cut it, and then. Tell them to watch this episode. All right. You had to take one guy. You got to pick one guy. Mm-hmm. You coach Saban. No, nah, we ain't going to say Saban because he was actually in the situation. Tua or Jalen to throw you the ball to lead the way. Who you taking? Oh, come on. You, gotta... <laughs> you know I like to get messy. Come on, Jerry. It's business. Like you said, Coach Saban, he ain't, you ain't talking to Coach Saban. Since you left. What 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 I gotta do with two and ten Yeah, that's that's not the same thing. <laughs> not quite the it's same this, thing. I'm just saying, like if you had to co- pick a quarterback. I'm thinking about my Bama days. I'm I'm finna take Tua. You taking Tua and Bama? Mm-hmm. He's taking Bama Tua, not yeah, Ryan that's what I'm saying. Tua. That's what I'm saying. Was he just like like that? Yeah, he, yeah. I know you used to I know you used to see them them games. Right. Man. We used to get out. Part of the second quarter, part of like the first seven games, we only played like two quarters. Was what, what makes him like special, bro? Like, what's his thing for you? Think about like, I call it bit wall. Make sure the best in the world at what you do. Like it's, for you, it's like, bro, like you, like to me, the best route runner in the world. He's so accurate with the ball. Mm. His accuracy is is crazy. Okay, and Jalen, Jalen, Jalen. Jalen right now is 
probably the top quarterback in the league for real. One of the top quarterback. I ain't, I ain't say the top quarterback no, in the league. Correct. Yo, I got big. <laughs> He said, huh? Hey, I got big. Like, whoa, whoa. I'm one of the top quarterbacks in the league. One of the top quarterbacks in the league, for sure. But, nah, Jalen just, his accuracy, his just, his decision making, everything. That's good. Yeah. I love it, man. I appreciate you stopping in, bro. This is a, a great conversation. Make sure y'all follow my boy on Instagram. You got a few camps coming up here. Um, so all the youth here in South Florida, right? Uh, it's going to be in South Florida. Uh, I got one in Denver coming. Oh, up. dope! Yeah, and I got a, a Jerry Judy day coming in South Florida. Okay, so we're gonna make that announcement. Make sure you send it to us. Mm -hmm. We, you know, we can break news too now, bro. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you know, we can push the content out. Tell us when you set the date. Where are you I gonna got be? You. I got you. And we gonna put it out. I bet. I bet. A hey, legendary conversation. Appreciate y'all. We'll see y'all mañana. We had to fight to get a meal. Yeah, wrongfully accused. We had to fight to get a pill. That's why we write to get a deal. He on the team, he gotta eat, you know.